Is, if you don't know who I am, I'm Leanna Walden with the Shameless Pleasure Movement. And um, I have a guest with me today, Ryan Thomas. He's a, a friend of mine, that uh, a man I met many years ago in Vancouver when he was just starting out exploring sexuality, like really exploring, diving in and um, trying to figure out what he wanted to do in that realm. Um, excited about it. Now he has a company called Intimate Lifestyle. Intimate Lifestyles? The Intimate, intimate lifestyle. lifestyle. The Intimate Lifestyle. And he works with men specifically. So um, it's really exciting to have him because I wanted to talk um, about the male sexual energy, uh, specifically right now during this time, what, what's, what's going on for men and, and how can they be supported and how can they help themselves around their own sexual energy. So we're going to get into that a little bit. Um, but first, um, Brian, why don't you why don't you say a few words about what you're doing what you're doing in Vancouver with um, with your with your business now? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so basically, what I do with the Intimate Lifestyle, it's a personal growth company. Uh, I help men uh, break through the emotional barriers and blocks that interfere with their ability to connect with their partners intimately, and also how to uh, how to have epic sex lives. So that's what I do. My past is I was in the military. I was uh, pretty shut down emotionally, um, pretty forward, just like a bulldozer, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and after I got out of the military, military. yeah. Yeah, exactly. After I got out of the military, I ended up doing some more uh, emotional work uh, and I was struggling with some uh, sexual dysfunction challenges. Um, so I ended up doing a lot of personal growth work and sexual exploration and uh, and fast forward a number of years. I wanted to start helping men in the ways that I wish I had been helped when I was younger. So instead of, you know, for me, it took me eight years, nine years to get to a place where I finally felt super confident in my sexuality and in myself. And instead of mm -hmm. taking nine years for guys to do that, I would like to narrow that down as quickly as possible. So that's what I'm doing with my business. That's awesome. That's beautiful work. There's there's um, there's been a lot of work done around female sexuality, and over the last um, I don't know how many years, but at least the last number of five years or so, it's it's there's been a resurgence in in um, male sexuality exploration, and 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 men saying, hey, like we there's there's a whole aspect here that we haven't had an opportunity to dig into and and discover and um the, all of the beliefs that have been driving sexuality for women and for men as we know there's just so many things that are are, are not helpful for us and haven't allowed us to really connect in a way that that is healthy for men and women to connect for for people to connect in general sexually so it's really it's really important that everybody has the opportunity to learn learn how to grow in that area in in the sexual realm. So um, right now we have a lot of people. They're singles. There's couples. We're like all stuck in our little places. It's different in different countries. In um, Rio, where um, we are in quarantine, uh, most people are in their homes, and couples are have been locked up for a couple of months and singles are on their own and uh vancouver what's in what's happening in vancouver right now uh yeah people are quarantined but uh they've opened up the city to allow groups of six uh to oh, be outside okay. um but uh, the 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 beach kits beach or kitsilano beach which is one of the major one of the main beaches in vancouver was jam-packed on friday so i don't think people were <laughs> they heard, oh, it's the end of quarantine. Six people, yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, We're whatever. Right. We're going yeah, to the beach. Just go to the beach. To yeah, beach. yeah, why not? Yeah, <laughs> they've had it. Well, it's also turning summer in Vancouver, right? And we're going, yeah. we're going into winter here a little bit. So, um, so what can you? Let, let's just jump in and talk a little bit about. Um, so you know, we're we're in this confinement, but even when as we come out of it, um, there's still opportunity for us. To uh, for men and for women to understand men in this way to explore one's sexuality. So maybe you can talk a little bit about what you can offer guys to start looking at that might might that, that might help them, that might that might ease the way a little bit. Sure. Okay. Uh, there's a, a few different directions that I can go with that. <laughs> Okay. Uh, so I guess there's the masculine energy component of it. So like how the masculine. So if we want to take a step back, we can look at 
energy. And I don't necessarily mean this in, a, in an ethereal woo-woo sense. I mean that life is left and right. It's light, dark. It's masculine, feminine. So there's the, the Taoist way of looking at things that there's always going to be a balance. And men mm -hmm. will tend more towards being more masculine in their, in their energy. Masculine sexual energy, masculine energy doesn't like tension. It likes to be free. So when we get horny and we get a lot of sexual energy, there starts to be a lot of tension. There starts to be this movement in our body and we want to get rid of it because we want to be free of tension. So mm -hmm. it's also why we like to overcome challenge. There's a challenge. We want to fix it and then find the freedom of having overcome this challenge. So you can look at masculine desires to be free. Uh, mm -hmm. So that ties into how we'll relate to and i'm skimming i'm skimming over this relatively quickly so this ties into how we'll engage with our sexuality so when we get really horny we just want to have sex and then just reach an orgasm as quickly as possible so a lot of guys will masturbate really quickly have an ejaculation and then have a momentary lapse or a momentary release from that tension and finally find that freedom and find mm -hmm, that peace. Exactly. So mm -hmm. that's what men tend to do with their with their with their sexuality. And during this, so that's what we tend to do. In the context of the quarantine, we're not mm -hmm. as distracted. So if guys aren't getting laid, they can still go out. They might get into fights. <laughs> they might drink a lot. They might do drugs. They might go partying. It's something that can distract them from their either their horniness or or loneliness. Um, or they might go to the bars and, and pick up and then just have a lot of promiscuous sex. But at this point, when things are forced into quarantine, we don't really have those, those opportunities to escape from, from ourselves. So the quarantine is really a blessing in this, uh, in this regard, because it's, it's guiding us back towards ourselves. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I'll just leave it, at, I'll leave it at there because I mean, there's a bunch no, of different that, directions that we could go. So that's a broad yeah, perspective. No, yeah, that, that's, that's beautiful. And that's, that's, that's a lot about what we've been talking about. Just going in, this is the opportunity to really go in and discover who you are at a deeper level, discover more about yourself, uh, not just, not just about who you are in general, but who you are as a sexual being. So what do you, what do you see? Now, I don't know, I, I, I don't know how many men have had that opportunity to actually say, okay, I'm going to start discovering my sexual being now that I'm in quarantine, but there still are, there still are men out there that are in quarantine and they're with their partners. And um, even when it starts to open up again, what are some ways that you suggest that they can they, they can go beyond just, okay, relieving that tension in instant, you know, that instant moment by ejaculating and, uh, you know, grow from that, expand from that so that they can use that energy, you know, in other ways, in other connective ways with their partner at the moment or just other ways in general in their life. Yeah, well... So again, there's a couple different directions that we could go. Um, just just checking in, you can still see me, right? Because now I just see, I only oh. see you, but the split screen is like gone. I, it looks like I just lost you. Oh. On my, I just lost you. Can you, can I get I can you back in? still see you. <laughs> Where did Ryan go? Oh no. I can still see you. You can't. No, Fuck! I see you now. <laughs> Come on, Very you strange. kidding me? Why are you doing this? I don't know what's happening here. Just hold on. Let's see if I can get you back in. Can you click the uh, link again, and we can see if we can get you back in here? There we go. There we are. Here we are. You're back in. Okay, now I can see you. All right. Now can you now can you hear me? Can you get yeah, yeah, we had a bunch of problems before. Yeah, you can hear me though, right? We had problems with the sound and oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so now you can hear you. Yes. You, you got me now? Okay, awesome. All right. I got you now. I got you. Okay, now. cool. Um so there's a few different directions that we could go with that question. So one one way that we can look at it is 
I can't, geez, I'm drawing a, a complete blank on the name of the book. Uh, oh, oh, that's going to drive me nuts. I'm going to remember it as soon as this call is done. Um, <laughs> it's all right. Just keep going into it. What's yeah, you know, I think gist? I've got it on my. I think I've got it on my bookshelf. But uh, yeah, I'll I'll drop that for now. So basically, we can look at our sexual energy uh, for as men. Is it's it's our creative energy. It's our creative yeah. source. I mean, if we look at the majority of men who uh, are highly, highly, highly successful, tend to have high sex drive. So we can look at our sexual energy as our life force, right? Right. And if we're just watching porn or if we're masturbating, we're basically literally, we're just giving away our life force. It's like, oh, I just don't want this energy. Blah, blah. I'm just going to get rid of it. Like, we always feel yeah. a little like blah afterwards after an ejaculation it's like uh i don't really feel like doing anything after i've ejaculated yeah likewise if i go to the gym i usually get this big endorphin rush or if i go for a run or if i work out i usually get this huge endorphin rush and i feel super energized mm -hmm. right so i can do the same thing with my sexual with my sexual energy the thing is, is that we don't really know a lot of men don't know that you can experience non-ejaculatory orgasms Exactly. So you can still experience a, an orgasm without the ejaculation. So normally what happens is we get kind of horny and we're thinking, oh my God, I, just, I really want to ejaculate. I really want to, I really want to come. And then we get that, that blah feeling after. That energy that's bursting at the seams, when you experience an orgasm without ejaculation, it actually starts to circulate. So that energy will, it, it's no longer bursting at the seams. Instead, it starts to circulate and we actually feel more energized. It's kind of like that same endorphin rush that we get after we've gone to the gym. So what we're doing there is instead of letting go of our life energy, we're actually taking it back when we're accepting ownership over it. And then we can take that energy. We feel more energized and we have more energy to take, you know, do like creative projects or tackle projects at work or uh, just do more things in our, in our lives because we just have more energy. So yeah. that's, that's how we can take advantage of our sexual energy. Another way that we can kind of look at it as well is uh, it's if I'm just ejaculating my, my energy away, like men are a lot more easy to control when they're complacent. So we can kind of look at it as though, you know, feeding porn and just, uh, just like little sneeze orgasms to keep, you know, to keep men complacent. Yeah. And I want to call bullshit to that. A way that we can actually become stronger men is accepting ownership over our sexual energy. Because it can be hard. It can be really challenging when you're really horny and just like masturbate and said, fucking own it and take it. Mm -hmm. Like, no, this is mine. This is my energy. And mm -hmm. I'm going to use this for myself. Mm -hmm. So it's just mm -hmm. another way that we can we can cultivate deeper strength as uh, as men. That's beautiful. That's beautiful work. And that that that's a practice, right? Yes, it is. That, <laughs> that yes, it is. Have to be, it can be very challenging. You have to be willing to commit to this practice because it just doesn't happen. It just doesn't, it's just not going to happen naturally in a sense. You have to say, okay, I am going to, I am going to hold on to this ejaculation. I am not going to allow myself to ejaculate. I am going to find ways to breathe this energy into my body. And how does that affect, how does that affect then um your partner oh on a number of it. yeah absolutely on a, no, on a number of different ways there's a certain level of potency that us men have and we all know it you know i've i've gone on dates with women and had sex with them and not felt as attracted to them after i've had sex with them and it's because mm -hmm. we just bring a certain level of energy in our lives when we have this sexual energy coursing through our veins so if you're in, if you're in a relationship and let's say you're just masturbating and not engaging intimately with your partner, you're not going to bring the same level of uh, same level of energy and intensity to your partner. And that's what a feminine being wants. They, they, a woman wants to really feel you. So when you mm -hmm. yourself are feeling things in your body, like your horniness, that is a level of intensity. That's a feeling that you're bringing into the relationship. And if you just go and ejaculate, you're not bringing that in. Uh, into the bedroom, you're not bringing that into the relationship. Um, and there isn't that potency that you have. So our sexual energy is something that uh, that that can really create 
a very a highly erotic experience in the relationship. So here's another thing as well is that if you haven't had sex, let's say you you're having sex once a week and you're masturbating four times out of the week and then you have sex at one time. If you don't masturbate during those four times during the week, you can use those times to maybe have some light touch, maybe some light caressing, maybe some flirtation to build the sexual tension so that the sex that you do have one time a week is explosive rather than, you know, really good. Instead, it'll be something that's explosive. So mm -hmm. you're bringing that potency into the bedroom and into your relationship and channeling yeah. it rather than being a victim of it. Right. So you're holding on to the energy instead of just releasing it and letting it disappear. And and then when when you do, I'm just going to reiterate a little bit as you, when you let yeah. it go, you um, you you crash out. Basically, you fade out because all of your life force energy is out of your body. But if you can hold on to it, not masturbate tease you with your partner a little bit more. And I think this is a, a phenomenal opportunity for men to practice this right now with their partners, because they are, um, if you, if you, if you are locked up with your partner, your wife, your, your lover, whoever that you uh, have intimate relationship with sexual relationship with, you can actually practice this and, and integrate it into your life and integrate it into your sexual connection. And, and as Ryan was just saying, you start to build up this energy where you don't just have these little orgasms anymore. You start to have these, you know, explosive orgasms that really fill your being and make you feel, make you feel really alive. Right. Um, <laughs> but, 100%. Uh, and, and it's also in the bedroom too. I mean, uh, like when I've, if I've, if I've ejaculated right, and, and done that a bunch of times, I'm less inclined to put in more effort towards foreplay, uh, going down on my partner. I'm, there's just less, and there's less energy when I, when I do touch her because I'm empty in myself. But when I have a lot of energy in my body, she can really feel that and I have more desire to just touch her. I feel it feels better when I touch my partner and I'm really, really horny. Like it just feels that much better. Uh, and, wow. and she can really pick up on that. Right. And how, what do you feel? What is it? Is it, is it a, more of an energetic charge for you or is it more, is it more of an intensity within your own body? What is that feeling that you're getting? Yeah. If I've, if I've ejaculated, I feel a little bit more complacent. Like I'll be kind of horny because I just want to fuck, but I'm complacent in my desire to 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 really connect. Yeah. Um. And 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 I'm kind of complacent in my desire to give her pleasure. I'll I'll admit when I'm really right. horny, um, I enjoy more of the experience. Um, I enjoy the whole experience when I'm you know after I've ejacu after I've ejaculated. Yes, but when I'm retaining my sexual energy i just enjoy it that much more like just mm -hmm. just a slight caress feels 10 times better <laughs> actually i can't really put it i can't i can't put a number to it but i'm just gonna put it more number electrifying it. possibly it's much more, more electrifying, electrifying. <laughs> yes yeah. yes um yeah well that's that is um this is like a this is a practice that's been around for a long time of course since the Taoists, because this is a big part of what they they teach and they they researched it in detail about how this actually affects the body physiologically and how it is actually very beneficial for the body as well. As you get older, it's better to hold off your ejaculation. And as you were saying, because it builds up, it, it builds up, you know, confidence in your in your being, it builds up this connection with your partner in a much more erotic way. Um, it's healthier for you as well. You feel you're more charged generally so that you, uh, like you were saying, your creative energy starts to burst much, burst open more. And of course, um, it's important to be creative during sex, right? It's important to be creative during sex. <laughs> yeah. 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 Don't, don't want to do <laughs> just the same thing. <laughs> so if you're, if you're not, if you're not, if you don't have any kind of confident, charging energy in your body how can you then allow yourself to be creative because a lot of the time women are wanting that creativity they're wanting more creative and they're wanting longer sex they need well women Jen, we're not going to talk all about women night right this time but women need more time generally so it's beneficial for both partners if the masculine energy is able to 
is able to sit in their own masculine energy for a longer period of time, right? So what what, what kind of little exercises can you offer? Is there a couple of exercises you can offer somebody that can just get them started if they if they haven't even thought about this before or they don't know what to do? Sure. Yeah, I can definitely give some practices. Um, I also want to, uh, so I'll, I'll get into that. I also want to address a, uh, a comment. Um, oh, please, because I have, yes. I have heard this come, I have heard this, uh, this comment before. So orgasm without ejaculation means you're a eunuch. Um, not quite, <laughs> no, <laughs> not quite, no. not quite. Um, so to say that sex is only one way and that you need to ejaculate, um, is very one dimensional. So in the same way that women can experience clitoral orgasm, G-spot orgasm, I mean, technically it's all clitoral, but uh, there are different kinds of orgasm that women can experience. It's a squirting orgasm, cervical orgasm. There are different kinds of orgasm that women can experience. And it's the same thing when it comes to men. And if you've never experienced a non-ejaculatory orgasm, then I'm going to challenge you that you don't really have any leg to stand on. So considering myself and other people who have been studying this for decades. Um, I learned from people who have been studying this stuff for longer than I've been alive. Uh, and mm -hmm. in, in the practice, you can experience an orgasm without an ejaculation. So mm -hmm. in those two, when you ejaculate, there is a feeling of, um, uh, a, a feeling of emptying. When you experience an orgasm without the ejaculation, it's actually more of a charge up. So whenever mm -hmm. I do that, I actually feel more clear. Uh, I feel more clear headed. Um, mm -hmm. I feel more energized in my life. Um, and I just feel like I can take more, take more charge. So, but instead mm -hmm. of the energy like bursting, instead it starts to circulate. So right. if, if I had told myself this back when I was in the army and I was 20, 25, 26, I'd be like, what the fuck am I like? What the, like, what, did, <laughs> what, did, what does this guy talk about? Really? Like what? Yeah. Um, and it was just because of certain sexual challenges that I had to deal with that I was sort of forced along this path to explore this. And once I discovered it, I was like, holy shit. Okay. This is a bit of a game changer. Okay. Yes. Why didn't someone, why don't people talk about this? Why haven't I been told about this before? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So certain practices, um, I mean, uh -huh. you can go, you can, you can simply go as a uh, no, no porn, no masturbation. You could do that if you wanted to. Um, yeah. you can also practice something called edging. Uh, so I'd say that that's the next, the next practice. Um, yes. so all that is is just, if you imagine your arousal, this comes from Mantok Chia, and uh, he's he's been teaching Taoist sexual mm -hmm. practices for 500 years. <laughs> it's, yes, it's been around forever. for a long time. Connected. He's connected yeah. to the long stream of yeah. sexual energy practices. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So if you imagine a zero being you know not aroused at all, and then a ten being the complete. I, I, it's actually the way he describes it is the 10 is right after the orgasm. And then the nine is the peak. You're in the middle of the orgasm. You're in the middle of the ejaculation, mm -hmm. right? If you yeah. bring yourself up to an eight or like, or a seven, let's say at five, at the level of five arousal, you're erect, uh, not supercharged up, but you are erect and you are aroused and you can masturbate. So you, you can have bring to yourself. Really, you have to really follow your own levels here, right? So it's a hundred percent practice of where am I? Okay. I'm here. I'm there. And that in itself takes practice. A hundred percent. Yeah. A hundred percent. So the, if you take, uh, if you take yourself up to say a seven, you can really charge up the arousal and then bring it back down to a five, bring it back up to a seven and bring it back down to a five. And this is another thing as well as a lot of the guys that I've worked with, they don't understand that they can experience pleasure without orgasm. So they'll, they'll right. sit down, they'll turn on some porn, they'll masturbate within two minutes, maybe, maybe five minutes and they'll spike. They'll be masturbating and all of a sudden spike and then they ejaculate, ejaculate an orgasm. Right. And that's the peak right. of the moment. Whereas, as you start to learn this and you start to channel your sexual energy, you can actually start to feel pleasure and heightened levels of pleasure without orgasm. So you can bring yourself up to a seven, feel a lot of pleasure, and then you can back back down to a five and then keep going. So this is a way to last longer in the bedroom. And it's also another way for you to start to experience more pleasure. And, and, mm -hmm. and also this is the steps. These are the steps towards um, experiencing non-ejaculatory orgasms. Uh, mm -hmm. you can bring yourself up to an eight where it's like, right. You're almost at that point of no return where you're going to yeah, tip over to the careful. edge. Very yeah, careful. you do. <laughs> <laughs> That's it's really hard. It's really, really hard. <laughs> Cause at that point it's like, 
I didn't want to come. I just want to. <laughs> Even the um, best of them, you know, you still have to understand your body and your levels so that you can say, okay, time to just calm down. And it's good practice uh, for couples. Uh, if you say to your partner, hey, I'm going to start practicing this, she will not be upset at you. She wants to elongate your sexual experience. And like Ryan was saying, it's that pleasure point that you want to experience as a man, but also with your partner, you can enjoy so much more pleasure. And she wants that too. She needs that to reach the levels of orgasm that she has available to her. Yeah. Oh, I mean, I think that, I think that, that also depends on, on the woman. I've been with women where they, they come like, just like that, just like that. They're super yeah. orgasmic. Uh, and they don't really need all that much time. And then there are some yeah. women who do. They they require a lot more time and a lot more stimulation to reach orgasm. On on one yeah. hand, uh, it's this is a great perspective and a great thing to keep in mind for providing more pleasure to your partner. And that's for for women. When it comes to men, this is just another way for you to have sex longer. I mean, sex is fun. It's awesome. <laughs> why not make it last longer? And why not intensify? the pleasure that you feel like, why would we not want that? Um, yeah. So that's just another, another perspective there. Uh, yeah, and, and I think that's something I, that guys I, when, can sometimes forget. <laughs> well, when you say, why would we not want that? There's a lot of guys who just don't get to that point um, because they decide that having that orgasm is more important for them. Is it, do you think it's because they have no idea and there's just no education around what is possible for them because many women complain that it's just not long enough. My sex is just getting boring. There's nothing happening here. Um, what is I your think opinion that, on that? I think that's, it's sort of multi-layered. I think that that comes down to both the way society looks at, uh, at male sexuality because porn is basically designed, uh, it's targeted around men's pleasure. Uh, and there's and and there's nothing wrong with that. It's just it's it's hyper focused on just one component of our pleasure, and it's not broadened enough. It's very one dimensional. So yeah. we learn that sex is basically about our pleasure, orgasm or ejaculation. Sex is done, and uh, so that's there's that in in the sense of how we look at sex. Then there's also, I mean it. it It kind of comes to a certain level of, of maturity. Yeah. Um, yeah, there are some men that I've worked with where they're so focused on providing pleasure to their partner that they don't get off unless their partner gets off. And there's also a level of a lack of maturity in that as well because those guys become so hyper-focused on a woman's sexuality that they can't experience pleasure on their own. Right. And that it's so right. focused on on the woman's. And, and I don't really align with that either. And I see that that is those are two ends of the of the spectrum like the pendulum swings from sex is only for my pleasure and i don't really care to yeah. last longer or give any pleasure to her and that sex mm -hmm. is about me and then there's this one over here where it's i'm focused so much on her pleasure that this is this is everything and i need to last longer so that way i can give her orgasms and, and all this right yeah and So the it's challenge kind of, for someone, yeah. So it, so it's sort of like kind of, like where kind of moving between you kind of move through these things too, right? Between it, yeah. wanting to give pleasure, wanting to have pleasure, um, it's a dance that's not that's that that's that that's not one or the other all the time. It's 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 what who's needing what at what time. Yeah, exactly. So it, it, there's different areas of growth for people who are on either side of that spectrum. So people who yeah. are purely focused on just sex for themselves, well, a way that they can mature themselves and grow is, okay, well, what can I create with my partner? What can I bring to the table? What can I bring to the bedroom? How can I make this a better experience for my partner? If I yeah. make my, I'm, if I make this experience better for my partner, she's going to want to give more to me as well. So it's going to have this additive effect, first of all. So selfishly, it's going to make an additive effect. And also, mm -hmm. well, what do I want to create in this world? I mean, what do I want to create? Is it purely mm -hmm. selfish? Or, or can I bring something to the table and give to this world? And the world being this person. 
that I'm having the sexual experience with, right? So that's for that person to work on. For this person over here who's so focused on giving pleasure to their partner, they can work on being a bit more selfish. And so practice that I give them is, okay, well, for the next couple of sexual experiences, you're going to practice on one person is giving, one person is receiving. So your job is to learn how to receive for a full sexual experience where your partner is focused on giving to you and to not feel guilty about it. Can you get off by being given to? Can you get off if your partner doesn't get off? Do you allow yourself to experience pleasure without um, feeling like you're doing something to to your partner? Does that make sense? Right. Yeah, 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 absolutely, absolutely. There's so there's, that, there's there's just areas there's of mature maturity. Yeah, there's the give and the receive. And sometimes we're, like you say, the, the maturity level, there's sometimes, sometimes it's it's difficult to accept. Um, now you're breaking up on me. <laughs> sometimes it's difficult to accept uh, receiving and it's difficult to give as well. So you're learning about both. What is it about? What is it that's important to give? How do I give? How do I allow myself to be a giver as well as how do I allow myself to receive so that we can we can both find places of pleasure that that we're both feeling that we're both feeling good about the situation. We're both feeling good in this sexual scenario that we're involved in. Yeah. Yeah. Can you can you hear me? Is it breaking up or is it still good? I can good? hear you. I can hear you. Okay, I can okay, hear good. you. Okay, good. Okay, good. Um, yeah, so it's a it's it's a fascinating topic. There's a lot of information about growing sexually as uh, in the masculine energy, uh, sexual energy, and and um, it's 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 such a powerful tool when you can allow yourself to go there, uh, because this is this is just more of who you are, right? It's an expanded version of you. It's like when you were talking about it, it's like you you expand to a certain degree because you're vibrating at a different level and you're feeling more. You're feeling more pleasure. You're feeling your partner more. You're feeling your life more. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. Um, <laughs> um, so, I think we're just gonna we're gonna wrap up there. I just wanted to okay. like get some some interesting tidbits in, and because um, this this techno you're kind of coming in and out now too, and I don't know what's going on there, but um, it's been really uh, awesome to to talk to you and hear about some of the work that you're doing now. I love that you're focusing on men completely, or it seems like that's your main thing right now, right, Ryan? Yes. Yeah. Yes, and you have. Um, do you have uh, what kind of a program is available or you I, you talked about a men's group that you were doing? Could you just tell, just give me a, a, an idea of what's going on for if anybody wants to do anything with you? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So I do have uh, two programs right now. One is a, uh, it's a three month program. It's called the Noble Lover. Uh, and basically what I do in that program is I, uh, I take guys through um, two, two parts. Basically, it comes down to how you're relating to your partner, confidence, uh, your value as a man, what you bring to the table as a partner, communication skills, uh, how to use conflict to deepen intimacy rather than destroy it, uh, how to set boundaries um, and earn more respect and just get more appreciation uh, in, in your relationship. And then the second part comes down to uh, your sexual pleasure, how to be more sexually confident, how to get that confidence last longer, uh, dealing with erectile dysfunction, uh, providing, getting more orgasms for yourself, non-ejaculatory orgasms, and how to provide more pleasure to your partner. So uh, that's uh, that's Beautiful what that program. program is about. Yeah, it's a three-month program. I also have a six-week program that is uh, entirely designed around uh, removing the emotional blocks that are getting in our way. So maybe there's anxiety, maybe it's fear. Um, I've worked with guys who are struggling with uh, erectile dysfunction, um, mm -hmm. and premature ejaculation. There's a lot of emotions that surround that. Um, so I just basically remove those blocks. <laughs> right. Um, and then you're, there's usually some tension in the relationship. They usually feel not as strong or confident in their, in their whole life as like as a whole. Yeah. And then that bleeds into their sex life as well. So I usually just, I, I go through that six week period where it's not so much coaching as in homework and stuff to do. Whereas it's processes that I take the guys through to remove those blocks that are interfering with their ability to, to live powerfully. So that's the six week program that I offer. So people can reach me on Facebook at uh, the, uh, well, it's Ryan Thomas, T I L 
for The Intimate Lifestyle. You can also find me on iTunes or Spotify. You can find my podcast, The Intimate Lifestyle. And you can go to my website, theintimatelifestyle.com. Beautiful. And we can put that in the in the notes as well, in the comments. Thank you so much, Ryan, for joining the Shameless Pleasure Movement. It's all about pleasure, creating pleasure, having pleasure, even during the quarantine. You know, this is the time that we need to start to we need to feel alive we need to feel more alive so that we we want we don't get sick so that we can continue to blossom in this world and that we can continue to have lots of pleasure created among all of us so (laughs) thanks ryan it's been really great to talk to you and um thank you for joining in um i will be back i will be here next week again with another with another guest i will be posting that in the next day and um if you have any comments you'd like to make or you'd like to contact me about anything then please message me or leave a comment below after this um this uh discussion that we just had okay much love making to everybody bye ryan bye